Well, final preparations are now underway for the president's State of the Union address. And tonight's theme, the great American comeback. But the speech coming against the backdrop of this impeachment trial, a vote expected tomorrow afternoon in the Senate, and a disaster for Democrats in Iowa last night. Joining us now, Mark Short, Vice President Pence's, uh, Vice President Mike Pence's chief of staff. Appreciate your time this morning, Mark. Thank you. Thank, thanks for having me on. All right. Well, obviously, there's a lot to get reaction to here this morning. But first, a look ahead to what we're going to hear from the president tonight. Well, I think that uh, the president is excited to talk to the American people and tell them about all that's been accomplished over the last three years. So much of the inside the Beltway media coverage has been focused on this sham investigation impeachment. But tonight he has an opportunity to say, look, in the last three years, we've had a remarkable economic turnaround with seven million new jobs, lowest unemployment ever uh, for African-Americans, for Hispanic Americans, for Asian Americans, for disabled Americans, record number of women that are employed today. Mm -hmm. It's a phenomenal story. You see what's happening with markets today and reinvestment coming back into the United States. He'll talk about the economic turnaround. He'll also talk about American strength on the foreign stage. And you see what while Democrats have been focused on this partisan impeachment, this president's actually been staying focused and negotiating new trade deals with Mexico and Canada, a new trade deal with China, and at the same time eliminating the most dangerous terrorists in the world in Soleimani and Baghdadi. So it's a remarkable story that the president has to tell. He looks forward to saying on the national stage. Well, there is no doubt. There is a lot to tell on the economy. When you look at the surging stock market again today, up 455 points, the Dow, uh, we're watching that. You mentioned the historic drop, the unemployment rate um, at a historic low. There is a lot out there, but what you hear from many Democrats is that this is not an economy that benefits everyone. This is the Michigan governor, Gretchen Whitmer. She's doing the Democratic response to the president's State of the Union tonight. Here she is making that case. I anticipate that he'll talk about the economy and, and try to take credit for, you know, Wall Street. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what's going on in the stock market to so many, Mich you know, Michiganders and Iowans. We need an economy that is strong for the, you know, teacher that is using her own money to buy school supplies or for the small business owner that has to make payroll at the end of the week. How do you counter that, that this is not an economy that benefits everyone? Well, the American people know better. The reality is that uh, the average disposal income for an average family in America has increased more than $5,000 over the last three years. And you look at the actual the lower 50 percent in net wealth have had the greatest increase in net wealth relative to the top 1 percent during the, the Trump era. So uh, the numbers belie what, what uh, the, the Democrats are saying. But the reality is that uh, this president has a great story to tell for all Americans and their economic achievements. And if Democrats want to talk about the economy, that's great. We'd love to have that debate uh, with Democrats looking at what they accomplished um, or didn't accomplish during the eight years of the Obama administration and a stagnant economy that averaged less than 2% growth relative to what this administration is accomplishing. Speaking of Democrats, the president responding to what we saw play out in Iowa last night with this tweet this morning, the Democratic caucus is an unmitigated disaster, writes the president. <laughs> Nothing works just like they ran the country. Uh, Remember, the $5 billion Obamacare website that should have cost 2% of that. The only person that can claim a very big victory in Iowa last night is Trump. How is the president, the vice president, and his staff reacting uh, to what we saw in Iowa last night as we still have no results? Well, the, uh, that's certainly the vice president traveled the state last week ahead of the rally, met with a lot of people in Iowa, talked about the success of this administration. I think we look at it and believe that just because the Democrat Party fumbled the football doesn't mean you blame the entire state. And I think that uh, uh, we relish the tradition of Iowa being first. And I think that, uh, that this administration is, is pleased with our success in Iowa and, and what we've done for the agricultural community as well. But, you know, you look at what happened, and I think the president's right to ask, if, the, if Democrats can't even run a caucus, how can you trust them to run the country? Julian Castro questioning whether or not Iowa should continue to be the first in the nation. Here he is. The people of Iowa are wonderful. They're wonderful people. They take their role seriously. But what everybody saw plain as day in front of their TV screen and what we're still seeing right now with the lack of results and the errors that have happened is that this simply is not the way that we should do this. It was a complete mess. So I, I hear your sympathy um, coming from the White House over the, the state and the many volunteers on the ground there and still no results. Um, but final thoughts on, on Iowa. Do you think that there will eventually be any change? 
Oh, I, I don't think there'll be change. I think the reality is that, uh, that Iowa being the first of the nation is, is fine. I think also, though, there's an idea, if you've seen a lot of Democrats make the case in complaining about Iowa, that Iowa shouldn't be first because it's not d diverse enough as mm -hmm. far as uh, race and color. But the reality is you look at the Democrat Party and their identity politics, and the top three candidates now between Sanders, Biden, Bloomberg are all uh, older white men. All the diversity camps have fallen off their their mm -hmm. slate. And so it's, it's ironic that they're now claiming that the, their party is the one that uh, needs to choose a different state. I think this president is, uh, is uh, focused on uh, doing what he did last night and winning Iowa decisively. Looks forward to going on New Hampshire next. Does he think that he can win again? Oh, I think that, uh, you know, four years ago, this president talked about a lot of promises he would make. He has a remarkable record of not just promises made, but promises delivered. Whether or not, again, it's the economy, national security, promises he made about Paris climate deal, promises he made to move the embassy to Jerusalem. He's got a yeah. phenomenal record, and you'll hear that tonight. All right. We will indeed. I want to finally end with impeachment. As we know, uh, the senators speaking on the Senate floor today, throughout the day, 10 minutes each they get uh, to make their final statements before the vote comes up on the articles of impeachment tomorrow, 4 o'clock in the Senate. What is the president saying about that this morning and expectations for what happens next? Well, I think that uh, there was a bipartisan vote not to impeach the president in the House, and we think there'll be a bipartisan vote to acquit the president in the Senate. We think this has been a waste of the American people's time. It's been several months uh, pursuing a hoax, and uh, the reality, is, as your viewers know, is that the money to Ukraine was released in time. We actually provided lethal aid to Ukraine when the previous Democrat administration refused to, and members in Congress refused to give it to them. I think that uh, this has been a complete sham, but the president has stayed focused, completing significant trade deals, making sure America is safer yeah. by eliminating terrorists, and Democrats have been focused on this sham impeachment. The American people are tired of it. We will hear from the president himself, State of the Union, happening tonight. Mark Short, appreciate your time from the White House this morning. Thank Thanks, you. Andrew.